welcome to fishing tutorials today's video is going to be about starting fishing and getting the most out of your first fishing trip there's a couple of things that you'll need to do before you go fishing one of those things is to get yourself a rod license you can get this from the government website you'll also need permission uh, from the owner of the land that you want to fish on in the case of the lake we're at today, it's actually a fishing club. So you can join for a relatively small amount of money for a whole year and come here as many times as you like through the year. Another alternative would be to get a day ticket on a commercial fishery. There are a small number of waters in the UK that are free to fish, but make sure you get permission from whoever owns the land or from the council or whatever before you turn up and get fishing. Anyway, I'm gonna head around the lake and try and choose somewhere to fish. In England and Wales, a rod licence is needed for anyone over 13 years old. However, if you're under 16, you can actually get your licence for free. This licence covers you for fresh water, as you don't need a licence for sea fishing. Now some people will say that fishing is an expensive hobby, but it doesn't have to be. On this session, I've brought the bare minimum that you need to start fishing. So that is a three meter telescopic whip. Uh, that will be my rod that I use this trip. I've also got a chair, a landing net, a little pan net with a handle. That's in case we get a fish that's too big to just swing out of the water. As well as this, I've got a tub of maggots and a little tackle box with some, end, uh, some terminal tackle in it. And that's literally all I'm gonna need for this session. When choosing a spot to fish, it's not often as simple as just the first area of the lake that you get to. Sometimes certain areas of the lake can hold more fish than others. What I like to look for is areas where the fish might be able to hide away, like underneath lily pads, uh, some weeds, overhanging branches, stuff like that. However, when you are just starting out fishing, it's quite nice to find an area where there isn't too much uh, undergrowth, where you, where you can fish without getting tangled in everything. There's no point fishing a spot which is full of fish if every single time you cast out you're getting stuck on branches or brambles. So the spot that I've actually chosen is an area that's quite special to us really because uh, we know fish live there, but also it was the very spot that, I don't want to say how many years ago, but probably about 10 or more, uh, we first really learnt fishing. We came to this lake uh, for a uh, an open day for the local club, Crowbra Angling Association, and yeah, we got um, guided in how to use the whip, like what I'm using today, how to check the depth, stuff like that. And me and my bro, back then, many, many years ago, uh, learnt to fish at this very location in, I think, this spot and the one next to it where I'm actually fishing. So we know these areas hold fish, they have done since uh, when we started fishing, and yeah, looking for places where the fish might like to hide is worth considering when choosing where to set up. This is a three meter fiberglass whip. You can get them relatively cheaply from most tackle shops. You can take the end off of this and extend the telescopic sections. When you get to each section, don't yank on it too hard. Just gently pull it into place. And there you go, I'll be able to fish with this very easily. On the end of this, I'm going to take a ready tied pole rig. You can also get these from most tackle shops. And what you want to look for is a pole rig with a reasonably small hook. So when you start fishing, you want to be able to fish with maggots as bait and catch fish of all sorts of sizes. And it tends to work best starting with a small hook. So this is a size 18 hook and it's got two and a half pound uh, line. This is pretty much perfect for when starting fishing. Because it's already tied and on this winder, you don't have to do really many knots or you know tying fiddly hooks on and stuff it's all set up ready to go so i'll pull the little elastic anchor off and that reveals the loop i will then take the end of the whip and loop the loop onto the connector pushing the plastic back down over it to grip it in place now it's as simple as extending this and unraveling the rig Now ideally you want the hook to be pretty much down by the end of the whip with the line looped on the end. This is to enable you to swing the fish to your hand 
as you can see this is slightly too long it's probably about a foot too long at the moment so what I'll do is I'll just cut, trim the end tie a new loop on the end to shorten the rig down now with an overhand loop knot tied on the end I've actually been able to shorten this rig down if you need any help tying fishing knots uh, there's a playlist on our channel called fishing knots so check that out and that will definitely help tie any knots that you might need but now that I've actually tied that in a loop the rig is now the same length as the whip this means that when I catch a fish and swing it towards me the fish will come towards my hand it also means that I can cast swing it in and rebate very easily to give yourself the best chance of catching a fish it's really helpful to know how deep the water is in front of you now for this we use what's called a plummet. I'll take one of these out of the pack. It's basically a heavy weight that will pull your float under. You push the hook through and then tuck the hook into the soft plastic underneath. That means that can't fall off whilst it's in the water. What this will enable you to do is swing it out into the water, like so. And if the float disappears, you're fishing too shallow. If the float lays on the surface, then you're fishing too deep. My float has gone completely under there. So I'll bring it back in. And because I'm too shallow and that float got pulled under, I need to slide the float upwards just a little bit and then try again. And that time, the float sits just above the water surface and that means that the hook is on the bottom the float is sitting on the surface and I'm fishing exactly the same depth as the lake in front of me if I wanted to go deeper I could push the float higher if I wanted to go shallower I could slide the float down but a good starting point is to fish the same depth of the water that's in front of you the bait that I would advise for your first fishing session is maggots I'd go to the local tackle shop near you and ask for half a pint or maybe a pint of maggots not sure why they measure them in pints I think it's because fishermen are a bit old school but if you don't want to touch maggots then you could use sweet corn you could also use a bit of bread that can work quite well but realistically if you're going fishing and you really want the best chance of catching a number of fish maggots are the best bet I like to put them on the hook just by taking the, um, the thicker end and hooking them really quite lightly if you slip them onto the hook lightly like this and they don't burst, they wriggle for longer, and I just find you hook the fish better when you, when you put them on the hook like this. Uh, so that's the bait on the hook. Now I'm ready to cast out. The cast is primarily underarm. The reason why I wouldn't advise sort of doing it overhead just, just yet is because you're more likely to catch yourself, catch your friend, or get stu stuck in uh, branches or brambles. So I hold the bait in one hand, the pole in the other, and I'll get some momentum by swinging it. You point the pole upwards, and you point the pole low. Then you point the pole upwards, and you point the pole low. And then it will sort of start to swing forward and backwards. Uh, I've just got caught on a uh, twig just there, um, demonstrating exactly how not to cast. Uh, I'll just pull this off, and then swing it back out there. Perfect, there you go. So point the pole up, and then low, and then up, and then low, and you can sort of get the hang of it. It's sort of you, you, you figure out how to flick the uh, float out. Now that it's in the water, throw a few maggots around it to try and attract the fish into the area. And oh, nearly got him. He must have just let go of it before I uh, before I struck. But yeah, the float's out there now. I'm just going to watch the float and. I would suggest you lift the rod at any sort of solid indication on the float. So if it's bobbling around, give it a lift, just see if there's a fish there. If there's not, you can swing it straight back out again. This is something a bit better. There it is. Oh, brilliant. This is one of the species that I really hope to catch today. A crucian carp. I remember catching these from this lake years and years ago when we were just kids. Oh, you gotta love them. So with the fish in your hand, to use the discorder, you need the line to be slightly tight. So I just lay the pole down in front of me so the line has got some tension on it. 
you'll then want to take the disgorger and just locate the uh, line into the slit on the side. Then as you slide down towards the fish's mouth, you can just pop it inside its mouth, give the disgorger a little turn or a twist. You don't have to stab, uh, stab around to get it out. Uh, it should just be a, a gentle push down and a little turn. There you go, the hook's come out. I'll pop this one back. And yeah, it's quite important to learn how to use a disgorger so that you can ensure that every fish goes back uh, without you know, a hook in its mouth. Um, normally you can just unhook the fish very easily without the use of the disgorger, especially if you strike and lift the rod as soon as you see indications on the float. Uh, but every now and then a fish will be hooked a little bit deeper and learning how to use the disgorger really helps. There's another video on our channel as well, which is uh, just about using the disgorger and it's got a couple of other shots that might help help you with that. Anyway, I've now caught a perch. Let's see what other species are down there. Oh, it's going. There we go. There's a fish. Oh man, I'm excited because it's a tench. Get in the net. There we go. Not massive as far as tench go. Tench can actually get pretty big. But what I do with every fish is make sure my hand is wet before I touch it. Uh, just means that the fish is less likely to uh, be harmed and its protective sort of coating of mucus uh, removed. Tench are particularly slippery, so I'm gonna try and hold him carefully. Hold your fish quite firmly, uh, but don't squeeze him like excessively and they'll be fine. That is so cute. A plump little tench. Now one thing you may have noticed if you've been watching this video carefully is that almost every time I cast out I'm throwing a little pinch of maggots around the float. That bait is what's drawing the fish into the area and helping me catch them. You could just throw a big handful of bait out at the start put your float over that and wait, but you'll probably be there a while. Feeding little and often, as accurately as possible, around your float helps build the swim, draw loads of fish into the area, and get some feeding so you can catch them. Well, there we go. Hopefully this video has helped you begin your journey into angling. And yeah, if you um, want to learn a little bit more about float fishing, maybe with rod and line, developing your skills, check out the video that's on screen now. Uh, as well as that, I'll put a playlist with some fishing basics to help get you started. Thanks for watching, see you next time.